I started bike racing, I, I thought that I would be relatively good at time trialing because I'd done triathlon. So that was kind of the format I was familiar with. And it was clear from some of my other, even from swimming, that I was better at long sustained efforts than at anything else. Um, but initially, I was not that good at it. I was pretty mediocre at it. And I didn't fully realize at first the importance of equipment and aerodynamics. And then I started working with a coach, Gianna Robert, who'd been a professional cyclist, an excellent time trialist, um, a master's uh, time trial champion. And she started to impress upon me the importance of equipment, other technical aspects like pacing. Um, and Rob started to really kind of get into this too and nerd out on those aspects of it. And so one year when I was still, I think like a cat three road racer, for my birthday, he got me a trip to the wind tunnel in San Diego to work on my equipment and aerodynamic position. And um, I thought that was ridiculous, like how extravagant to do this pro thing when I was a mediocre time trialing Cat 3 cyclist. But um, the uh, when we went to the wind tunnel, they, they're able to run calculations really quickly and try to figure out how much improving your position could help over the course, say, of a 40k time trial. And I said, you know, I'd like to be more competitive. And I was third in the district championship, but I was 90 seconds behind my competitors. And they tried out some things and then they kind of they were kind of excited and they rushed into the wind tunnel and they said, if you just do that, you'll go 90 seconds faster over 40k and you'll win. And I was like, oh, please. Um, and then that year, I did the same power, but my new position, and I went 90 seconds faster, and I won, yes. which was. And then I looked up what the record was. And then I plugged that into the computer. This is around the time that Jens Voigt set the hour record for the men who okay. someone did the same thing for him. And I said, huh, yeah, I think Amali can do that. Uh, and so then that sort of became a. Uh, thing and I think it was maybe the day that Ian's point set his hour record that I came home with a Cervelo T4 frame uh, that I had gotten for her uh, and uh, yeah that that um, and so we we thought that was possible though we weren't sure uh, Rob it was possible I thought it was impossible again <laughs> I was like that's nuts I can't try to break Leontine Van Morsel's record but again Rob had faith in me yeah I do and I enjoy that so that's, uh, you know, most, I think a lot of uh, guys who like bikes, they, their uh, spouses complain when they spend money on bikes <laughs> and tools and parts. Right. And in my case, since most of the bikes and tools and parts I buy are for Molly, then, you know, she's exactly. you know, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's actually been one thing that's been sort of boring about the pandemic is normally I spend a lot of time with working on bikes, putting them together, taking them apart, getting them ready to go places. And I think, you know, just having a bike sit on the Zwift train or occasionally I have to change the chain. <laughs> That's about it. Exactly. Yeah. Although yesterday he was on hand ready to help hit. Oh, and today he did it to hit my power up at just the right time during my race, but we had not practiced it. So yesterday was a little bit of a comedy of errors, but we'll get better at our teamwork, I think. Is the tires have gotten better over the last few years, and that's made a difference. Um, the new Vittoria tires are better than the Vittoria tires from five years ago, and it, it makes a difference. The skin suits and getting exactly the right skin suit for you. Right. And, and you just simply cannot count on someone else's testing to tell you what is the right skin suit for you. Mm -hmm. um, so Molly uses a no-pin skin suit, um, and it's great for her. Uh, um, and that, that's made a big difference too. Um, CJ, one of the women on the DDC women's racing team invited me to come out for the team time trials. And uh, so I've been doing that for a couple months now. And really this has been my introduction to racing on Zwift. I started riding in April um, when we stopped riding outside. Um, with our shelter in place order here in the Bay Area. And um, yeah, the racing part is just uh, for me kind of ramping up and I'm learning the ropes, but it's pretty fun. I'm very grateful uh, to women like CJ and Sam on Dutch Diesel who are showing me the ropes. So it's hard to do goal setting right now, I think with so much uncertainty, but um, there are a few things that if it's possible, my schedule this year would include um, the elite track 
nationals where I would do potentially the individual pursuit. And the team pursuit is an event I really love. It's a little difficult since I'm not close to a velodrome. It requires practice. Um, and so I'm not sure that I'll have enough opportunities to practice to do team pursuit, but I, I really do enjoy it. So I would like that. Um, I would love to go to road um, nationals on uh, for masters, which will be in uh, Bosnia Herzegovina in World. September. Worlds, yeah. Yeah. World Worlds for masters, yeah. Right. right. Um, and then track masters worlds will be in Los Angeles in October uh, is the plan. Um, and in a perfect world, we would also go back with a group, I think, to Aguas Calientes. Mm. Um, and if we were to do that, I would go, I would try to better my own hour record and 2K. I will say, as Rob pointed out, so far as I've gotten older, I've been still able to extend my hour record. It's getting harder. Um, so we'll see. Uh